So where do I start? This is going to be like an Oracle Arena shuffle build, but it will probably also work in just regular threes. Obviously, you can make tweaks into certain things. This is quite a good one size sort of fits all starter build. I would say something like this. And I'll talk about each individual thing and the stuff that I haven't taken. But I guess it's probably best to start with the Oracle tree in the middle and then we'll kind of go off from there to sort of explain the rest and why I've chosen these things for Oracle in particular, right? Void Weaver will have a different build and I'll go through that, you know, later on. So obviously we're starting off with the Premonition and the way that this works, if you don't know, it is it is a spell that changes each time you use it. So it starts off as Premonition of Insight and then the next time you use it, it will be Premonition of Piety and then the third time will be Premonition of Solace. And then the fourth time, it will be all three at once because you end up with this talent, right? It does all three at the same time. Now, the, the big ones here for me, the, the Solace one and obviously the, the final, the fourth one, because it puts quite a big shield on people that you can cover with Power Word Shield. And it also includes damage reduction, right? So it's like a bark skin, which is really, really strong as you can sort of rotate that into your other cooldown rotations to bridge you to the next cooldown a lot of the time which is a big deal you know it can get you to the next rapture it can get you to the next ps these kind of things and this is really important in shuffle because a lot of the time shuffle kind of doesn't even come down to mana it comes down to who runs out of defensives first sort of thing and the, the games you usually like a long game can be between 50 and 60 percent damp i would say on average so yeah that's the premonition then we just take preemptive measures, obviously just a bit more power shield, absorb and, and damage on penance smite. And these are just like mandatory things, right? You you, you have these no matter what. Uh, preemptive care is a terminal and renew duration. And then we want the powered life CDR. So three seconds of powered life. And you can use it. This is the big part. You can use it uh, on targets below 50% health rather than 35% health, right? So this is, this is a big one. This is your other option, but I actually don't think this is worth it because you're going to be playing Ultimate Radiance anyway. So if you don't play Ultimate Radiance and you play this instead, you lose the power and life value and you are very much more constrained about when you can actually use the Radiance, right? It's like basically one Radiance a minute. It's just, it's not enough, especially if you're running something like Harsh Discipline, right? So it's a lot more scary to run this and it doesn't really give you that much value other than maybe an extra pvp talent point but there's nothing that's worth losing it for next up is going to be assured safety which is just putting a pom on when you shield someone which is really nice for buff protection but also it actually does a decent amount of healing it's usually coming at around five five six percent of my total healing in the game just from this one talent which is really nice because obviously i'm not taking pom i, I did actually test to see what it would be like to have focus mending, but it didn't actually add that much value for the two extra points. So I, I deemed it not worth it basically. Um, and, and you could argue the point that if you go down to words of the pious, that it's only one extra talent point, right? And you just skip Holy Nova. But I actually think words of the pious isn't that good for Oracle. You don't end up smiting that much. And the, the spec isn't based around smiting that much. So I ended up skipping words of the pious and all this stuff and taking more utility, which I'll get into in a little minute. So next up, we had the Divine Feathers. So 10% more move speed on Feather is really nice. And then obviously, if you chuck a Feather on someone else, you get it too. So it's double value. So that's that's a, a nice one. Definitely some tech to be used there for people if they're getting kited or whatever. Uh, the other option being Double Leap, which I actually don't really like because it's quite constraining in the way that you have to use it. I'm sure there's there's applications for it more so in in rank 3v3 maybe or in something like bg's where you can then grip two people back instead of one that could be good but in arenas i just think that the feathers are stronger but this is definitely one to keep in mind where if you're doing different kinds of content it might actually be useful for you and, and you'll find that with a few things like there's a few choices that i've made and it's for a specific thing right it'll, it'll be for specifically shuffle or for specifically threes and there are options there and if you understand when when to choose those options then it's more power to you basically so next up is foreseen circumstances so this is just paints up reduces an extra 10 percent damage like cool 50 percent instead of 40 we take those flash heal and powered shield this is a tricky one actually flash heal and powered shield are 30 percent more effective when cast on yourself and the option is Desperate Measures. Desperate Prayer lasts an additional 10 sec. Angelic Bulwark's absorption effect is increased by 15% of your max health. So I'm actually not even taking Bulwark at the moment. 
if I was to take this, I would probably take Bulwark instead of something. Not sure what yet, but yeah, this this is not terrible if you know you're going to get trained a lot, I'd say. And you're not able to get a lot of flashes off. But 30% more on shield on yourself is, is obviously good too. So it's a tricky one. I think Prophet's Will actually just comes out slightly ahead. Uh, Premonition gains an additional charge. So this allows you to obviously to cycle through it effectively one minute faster to get to that third and fourth one. So a lot of the time I end up using Premonition of Insight basically at the start of the game. I'll, I'll throw out Radiance, I'll throw out Shield, and then I'll pop, pop the Premonition of Insight just to get that cooldown running and, and to get to Premonition of Solace quicker. Then we have Fate Bender or Perfect Vision. At the moment, I mostly play Fate Bender, but I actually think there's an argument to be made for Perfect Vision as well, just to cycle through a little bit quicker and to get more third and fourth Premonitions off throughout a game. You know, maybe if you run this, you'll have the option to get sort of two, two Solaces and two uh, what's it called? Two clairvoyances. But that needs more testing, I would say, at the moment. I've, I've not given that much of a, of a look yet. And then, obviously, yeah, clairvoyance is the last one. So with that in mind, a lot of our... Yes, some of it healing is going to come from atonement, but a lot of it is going to come from shielding and a fair bit from a radiance as well. Ideally, we're going to be using penance offensively to give atonement healing. But we do have contrition if you do decide to do a defensive target penance so it gets, just gains a little bit of value. It's about 10% more healing, I would say, on, on a penance defensively. But obviously, the offensive ones are where you want to be ideally using it. Left side, obviously, you have Renew by default and Fiend by default. And obviously, you want to spell magic. It's a no-brainer. And we go down, we get improved flash heal. Obviously, with the uh, flash heal procs that we'll be getting, this is just very valuable. Now, improved, improved Purify, you can take this against Shadow Priests. And you can drop something like leap cooldown you could drop mental agility if you wanted you could drop mind control if you're not using it that much double death these are all kind of like flex spots i wouldn't drop sheer terror especially in solo queue and in shuffle i think that a lot of the fears you get off there's just a lot of random damage flying around and it's a lot more likely that your fear is going to break if you don't have this so i think this is actually quite good in shuffle maybe you don't need it in regular twos or threes uh, and you can get away with with playing root there or nothing at all there if you you know, if you feel like you need the improved purifier against a shadow priest, right? So that's the the choice that you, you need to make. And then we go for the psychic voice. The, the fear cooldown is obviously the most important one there. Shadow of death, standard. Now on the left we skip pom and focus mending. As I said, they're not that strong for us as disc, and they don't have that much of a, a place in the just general rotation. They're not that valuable compared to other button pushes. So I've skipped that, skipped Nova, and I've skipped most importantly words of the pious because we're not smiting that much. So with that in mind, spell warding's nice, but because we don't have these other talents, it's just not worth committing the points into. Same thing for Rhapsody, obviously. Uh, next tier is just, from Darkness Comes Light, you're going to obviously be putting Purge the Wicked up on various targets. So if you can get some flash heal procs, instant flash heals, uh, it's, it's good value, basically. You aren't going to be the target that much, so... Protective Light just isn't as, as strong. If you are playing matchups where you are the target a lot, then protect, Protective Light can be good. Obviously, Feather, standard. Phantasm is super important to remove the, the snares. It's like, part of your main mo mobility is this. And then Death and Madness. Again, this is, like I said, this is kind of a flex spot, but this is kind of, I feel like this is quite nice to secure kills with and to just add value. Maybe grind out an extra cooldown with it if they they aren't going to die and they get extra low. So I, I really like this. I think it's good uh, good value. Leap of Faith is just standard. You, you pretty much have to take this. And then, as I said, Sheer Terror is, is, is decent. Mind Control is optional. That's kind of a, up to you. Master Spell is pretty good against a lot of stuff. But obviously, if you're not facing a mage, you could... Or, or I guess like a Pala or something, you know, where you want to actually MD stuff. You could drop these and, you know, flex into some other things. You could even flex into this. But... I would say things like Vamp Embrace, Sanguine Teachings, uh, Sandlin. I tried these and arguably they're slightly better for Voidwalker because of the way that it works, right? It's on Shadow uh, and the, obviously the Voidwalker, when you Mind Blast, it turns your Smite into a Shadow spell. So it's quite nice for that, but obviously it's very constraining and if you do get stopped while using it, you lose basically two talents. And it was doing about half of the single target healing of an Atonement during that time, so quite niche ones there I'd, I'd say definitely don't pick those as oracle teeth evasion you don't need apathy you don't need you're not going to be critting mind blast that much throws of pain arguably is okay 
but the damage is actually quite low for two points so i've skipped it i haven't really bothered with it uh, and you also have to go through void shield which isn't really needed as much i actually think you're less of a target this expansion than you were last expansion because of all the extra cool lands you have with things like premonition so i think i think priests are in a very tanky spot compared to sort of historically so yeah i haven't taken any of this stuff court rising shadows same it's a bit bit of a niche one that one manipulation you take two percent less damage again it's, it's just not enough value for committing a point to when there's so many other good things so if we come down on the left inspiration is nice and this again is arguably something that you could flex into however your crit is relatively low and you want to be penancing offensively where you can right so the actual chance to get an inspiration in the game is not that high right like you need to be regularly defensively penancing and obviously getting the instant flash shield procs on people to to have any sort of decent uptime of this and i just don't think it's going to be that high if you have nothing better to take you can take it for sure but yeah as i said the penance should be offensive and and you just don't get that many flash shields throughout the game uh, mental jelly again is a flex one but i think this is kind of nice for longer shuffle games where if you are dispelling a lot this can be really strong especially defensive dispelling so like into something like an sp you would want this right when you're running this as well then it's super valuable body and soul i think this is just really good overall it's obviously not needed to get further down because of the other talents we've taken but the fact that it also provides purge protection for your shield is a huge deal because people will be trying to snipe your rapture shields off your big shields off with purges if people are low on debuffs it's definitely a viable thing to be doing and, and you know if you quick on dispelling people's rapture shields you can get a lot of value and force an extra cooldown out basically but if obviously you, you hit the body and soul or, or the palm a couple of times over the shield then you lose value because you don't really care about getting those off right and you've used, you've now traded a global for that so the body and soul protecting the shield and and you know increasing the chance that they waste a global purging it or trying to purge it is is big so even even that's even without the move speed at all right the move speed is just kind of like icing on the cake, I guess. Power infusions, obviously standard. Twin and uh, twins of the Sun Priestess, standard. Always want to be PIing someone else for the double PI value. One point, definitely worth it. Unwavering will, while above seventy-five percent health, the cast time of your flash shield and smite is reduced. So you just have to take this, basically. Otherwise, you can't get the Angel's Mercy. You can't get the Surge of Light. Yeah, it's this isn't that good. But if you don't take it, you can't get the good stuff here, right? You could only just come down here to get powered life which i think is very important as well this kind of fills a gap in your healing rotation where if you didn't have it and people were getting sort of under pressure you'd think okay i haven't got any radiances now like i've just used my shield my options now are basically penance use a cooldown or try and cast and if they had kicks up or instant cc up trying to cast can be risky right flash shield that is so powered life kind of bridges that gap a little bit more and sort of gets you to the next powered shield cooldown gets you to the next maybe penance cooldown where you can go for a penance and line so you don't get interrupted these kind of things so it's really nice in that regard and also the option is three percent more healing and if you look at your actual powered life healing throughout a game most of the time it's over three percent but not only that it's incidental healing as well it's not just like rotational piss healing where it's like okay i did three percent more healing on a guy that's at like 90 percent anyway it, it it's like it's almost inconsequential because at some point they're going to just start getting overhealed right if it's not like a big go or something whereas when you're powered lifing someone they're under 50 percent they're under pressure you know they're trying to kill that person they're trying to force out cooldowns they're trying to do a go so the value of it is huge as a result of that right so definitely a big fan of this one especially when you've got this talent right it's just insane haven't taken divine star or halo i just don't rate them i don't think they're good uh lights inspiration again you're not going to be the target that much so two points into this isn't that good unless you know you're facing something where you're the target a lot TLDR. and same thing for bulwark same logic same reason i haven't got it you can flex into it with something else you could easily you know drop mind control or something and grab bulwark again that's sort of personal preference i'm sure there's situations where the bulwark is valuable but i don't think it's that strong especially if you don't have this so i've skipped it on the other hand we've got twist of fate after damaging or healing a target below 35 percent health gain 10 percent increased damage and healing for eight seconds so coupled with powered life you can get some nice uptime on this when people drop low we have also obviously got a translucent image so just damage reduction when you fade 
It's a, a nice little mini wall, especially with the low cooldown on Fade, only 20 seconds with the improved Fade, so that's good stuff. Reflective Shield, super good value in the shuffles. You're going to be shielding a lot, and this is a lot of the time going to be your top damage. This actually has a tremendous amount of value in, in longer games, especially when people aren't actually getting topped anymore in late dampening because you're still reflecting that damage and that damage is now sticking, right? That person is now going to be sort of however many percent lower because you have this and they're not going to get topped back up to full anymore. So it's like consistent value as long as they don't get topped, if that makes sense. So yeah, really good talent. That's, and this is for free as well, right? You don't, you don't actually have to do anything for this. It's just you continue your normal play and get extra value out of it. Uh, Void Shift is imperative. Can't play without this one. Essence Devourer is, is, I think, more of a PvE tool. And then Phantom Reach. Personally, I think this is one of the best talents we've ever gotten. I think that the plays that you can make with this are insane. This brings our heals up to a 46-yard range. You can outrange all sorts of stuff with this and play in a much safer position as long as your team understands how to play with a Disc Priest. If your team just collapses back on top of you all the time, obviously you won't get any value out of this. And it makes it a lot harder for you to avoid CC. You're going to get cross CC. They're going to get good uptime on their target. So this is why you never want to collapse back onto a disc priest. You want to stay out on the map most of the time, unless you are in a situation where you have to line and you're going to die if you don't. Uh, and a lot of the time that will be because your priest is already in CC, right? So yeah, stay away from your priest. This is good. Um, on the other side, we've got in disc, we've got Atonement, obviously is standard. And then we just take Power of the Dark Side, Pain Sup and Radiance. And then we take Light's Promise and Bright Pupil. And the spec is going to be quite a lot about Radiance in that obviously it's nice instant healing for the team. It applies Atonement, but also it gives harsh, dis harsh discipline, right? So you can kind of use Radiance rotationally, at least one of them, maybe keep the second charge for like emergencies or times where you really want to burst hard with your penance because you get those extra ticks you go for the mind blast which gives you power of the dark side which gives you stronger penance right so then you have an eight tick penance that's extra strong which is awesome right and then the mind blast is also putting 10 percent extra spell damage on them through schism so this is going to be your main nuke style right you're going to go for the schism with the mind blast then you're going to go for the big penance and that's going to do a ton of atonement healing but also it's going to do a ton of pressure and you can use that in sort of a multitude of different ways. But going back to why the Radiance is good. So this will proc Harsh Discipline, right? And then for every Bolt of Penance that you do, you get 10% more Absorb on your next shield, which stacks up to 8. And that's from this. It works on Smite as well. But I think generally you want to be using this on Shield because 8 stacks of Wheel and Woe, the cap, is going to give you the same shield value as a rapture shield right a rapture shield is also 80 percent stronger so that's the, the value that we're talking about here right so the rotational kind of way this build works is you want to try and penance as much as you can because you're going to get wheel and war off it after you penance your shield you're going to get a good value shield off it and then sort of you want to weave in so that your your radiance is never capped at two you want to weave in radiances so that you get the extra penance ticks through half discipline and that's kind of your main rotational thing while staying really far away and then outside of that you're just going to be rotating cooldowns so you're starting off obviously with the the premonition of insight going into the piety and then you want to try and in shuffle especially but maybe not so much in other brackets but in shuffle you want to try and hold the pain suppressions for later and use the rapture earlier because of the way that dampening works pain suppressions are a lot nicer to have later now even though the rapture is resetting the where is it i know this one here is it this one no where is it this one so the rapture shields whenever you shield your pain suppression cooldown is getting reduced right so at times it can be nice to use the pain suppression before the rapture because the rapture shields are going to reduce the pain up but rapture isn't as it's not as a, a as alluring to do as it was last expansion because they've changed how rapture works so now you're not just spamming shields mindlessly with rapture right instead you have the initial use and then five more shields that are banger so you can be a lot more mindful about how you use them. I think it lasts for like 30 seconds, the buff. So you have 30 seconds to be really mindful about how you use these, these five shields that are absorbing a lot of, of the pressure that the other team is doing. So Rapture is, is almost your biggest cooldown at the moment, I would say, in early dampening. Later in dampening, obviously, they're not, it's not as valuable. And, and the PS can be really good for allowing your team to pressure and, and sort of 
dealing with offensive CDs without having to fall back and be defensive, which is really what you don't want in shuffle, right? So that's kind of the 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 CD mentality. Obviously, swap is is kind of almost the last thing you want to use or like in an in an emergency because it's not affected by dampening. And then you've got dome, which is kind of flex. If you're against a rogue, you maybe want to save it for bomb. If you're not against a rogue, you can use it a little bit earlier if someone gets stunned, something like that and try and save the PSs for later, as obviously you can use those while stunned, so they're a little bit more versatile. And then what else have we got? Ah, yeah, the, the ultimate penitence. Again, something you want to use, I would say not too late into damp, but sort of like three quarters through the game, I usually try and like to use it. There'll be a point in the game where you're feeling like, oh, we're actually under a, a fair bit of pressure here. I'm going to have a hard time recovering this with regular healing, and that's where you want to try and bring out the, the ultimate penitence. I would say that's around 40 to 50% damp, something like that is where it's really, really valuable. And obviously you're building pressure with that as well. Usually I try to use that on enemies so that we atonement heal the team and build pressure on the enemy team. Obviously, if you can get an isolated one on a single player, it's insane because you're gonna force school lines out for sure uh, or, or get kills with it. I've gotten a, a fair few kills with it. So that's the cooldowns. It's gone off on a little bit of a tangent there outside of talents, but I figured it was actually valuable to talk about. Uh, next, we've got shield discipline bit more mana make sure the shields are absorbed when you're using rapture and just chuck another one on right after otherwise you're going to lose some mana value barrier better than luminous barrier i think i believe this is still dispellable and it's yeah it's the the, the actual absorb on it is really low so not worth powered barrier way better painful punishment i think i was toying with it and it's not terrible but i actually just think pain and suffering is is better and i'm trying to look into ways of getting two points in this maybe you could drop lenience but i think that 3% damage reduction over the game actually is pretty good. So this is why I've, I've kind of only got one point in here at the moment. Maybe you could put Shield Discipline into this if you're not going Goom, that could be all right. So could could toy with that. Not a terrible idea. Obviously Purge the Wicked, Rapture, Revel in Purity. So just Purge the Wicked deals additional damage. And then when you Penance, you can spread it. So that's going to save you a global from dotting everyone, basically. Contrition is another one. You could not take this and put it into Pain and Suffering. I am still uncertain on how much value this actually brings. I'm going to do a bit more testing, but you could pay, potentially take this out and put it in here if you're feeling that way. Rapture is giving two additional shields. Borrowed time. So whenever you shield, you get haste for four seconds. And it's not like in Wrath where if you did a cast, it would remove it. I, I think it just stays on, right, for four seconds. So it's just, if you're spreading out shields, you're just getting a lot of passive haste value from it, which is really nice. Castigation gives you that fourth tick on penance. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the shadow side at the end. I'm going to talk about this stuff on the left first. Because I think this is some interesting stuff. And I think this applies a little bit more to Void Weaver. But we'll talk about it in a second and why I haven't decided to go for it. We've also got uh, da, 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 Train of Thought. So Flash and Renew reduce cooldown of shields. Sometimes you'll want to do this. Sometimes it's valuable. Sometimes you've your shield is still on cooldown and you've got a nice wheel and woe stack and you're like, oh, I just want to quickly get a shield up, chuck a renewed so that you don't get CS. Maybe on someone that didn't have atonement, so you get value there. And then you can chuck a nice shield of one second earlier on the guy that's under pressure and maybe save a cooldown as a result of this. So this is just some small stuff that you can do it, right? And then obviously Smite reduces the cooldown of penance, which isn't as applicable here but it's not terrible obviously because it gives you faster wheel and woe but there's not that much there's not as much opportunity to smite with oracle as there is with void weaver ultimate penitence obviously and then lenience for the reason we talked about earlier the vine ages is, is kind of bad honestly it's, it's not that great usually the overall healing done from divine ages is pretty low but you want it to get to this which is actually nerfed to 20 percent in pvp but i think it's still really good because shield is just your top healing basically always so yeah i rate this i think this is valuable blaze of light it's just damage on smite and penance and gives the oh the, the move speed on penance is really nice actually if you're pushing for a fear what you can do is you can go for like a feather into fade penance and if you get there in like one second or whatever because of it right you can just surprise people and they can't do anything about it and you can just fear them right so it, it requires a little bit of, of sort of practice to get the micro on it right and the timing on it right but yeah you can do some really nice pushes with this and then obviously wheel and well we've talked about already harsh discipline we've talked about already heaven's wrath generally you're not going to be doing a second ultimate penitence because you the, the, uh, like an early one isn't that valuable and you definitely won't get to a second late one so this won't give you that much value in shuffle maybe in regular three this can, could be something that's more worth taking as obviously the, the dampening is ramping up slower overloaded with light is just pve 
don't need this. And Twilight e Equilibrium. It's just, it's just weak, to be honest. Like if there was something to do with healing in there as well, it would be nice, but I just think it's weak. There's not that much rotating between Holy and Shadow, especially with Mind Blast being a 20 odd second cooldown now. So yeah, I just think this is a weak talent. Even when you're playing sort of Void Weaver, all of your stuff Shadow, right? So it's like hard to actually get value out of the Holy portion. I'd say that the main, your main chance to actually get value out of this is if you go for like a Mind Blast into Penance with an eight tick Penance with Power of the Dark Side because this doesn't actually make it into a Shadow spell, then you'll get a 15% stronger Penance. But it's like for a one talent point at the end, it's just, it's too niche for me. So yeah, I don't, I don't like that one. Uh, Expiation isn't that good either because your Mind Blast isn't going to be that big of a portion of your, what would it be, with your, of your overall damage. However, you can consider it worth it for death, right? Because if you're running double death, maybe you get some sneaky executes in with this. And this is something I might actually toy with. I might drop this and put it in here. Maybe try and get another point in there from somewhere. I can even do that now. You see, you can't even do that. So it's tricky, right? To actually get this, like what can you even drop, right? You need lenience to get there. You'd, you'd have to drop Harsh Discipline. So you just can't get it. So I think this is more of a Void Weaver one when you come down this way, right? Then you can maybe argue about getting this. So I'll look into that. Maybe add this into my, my Void Weaver build just for sort of those sneaky double deaths at the end to try and take people out. But yeah, as Oracle, we don't take it. And and as I said, the Shadow Covenant, Malicious Intent, maybe it's if you could drop something, maybe instead of Pain and Suffering, but I actually just think Pain and Suffering is more valuable over time because a lot of the time you're not actually using the full duration of the schism anyway you you know you pop a, like this, the mind blast you do a bang of penance into it maybe a couple of smites after you've shielded obviously because so you, you get the wheel value on the shield not the smites and then sort of you're done you have to move on to something else right you, so the extra time actually isn't that good i think and then shadow covenant is casting shadow fiend enters you into shadow pack transforming halo so this is the one that makes your penance and Halo and Divine Star, which we don't even use, into Shadow stuff, right? And it buffs their damage by 25% and then another 10%, right? But yeah, as, as Oracle, you just don't get as much value out of it. I mean, you could give it a go, but I think that the raw healing of the other build is better and the reliability of having harsh discipline with Wheel and Woe, it's just more raw instant value over the course of the game. You know, if you have this, it's nice, but if you get stopped or CC'd or collapsed on a lot, then it's really hard to actually get value out of it. So yeah, this is this is also for me the reason why Void Weaver, although it's really fun, is slightly weaker than Oracle. Because these talents are susceptible or more susceptible than these to lockouts, basically, and, and CC and just stopping you being that turret that makes it really strong. If you're playing in a comp where you can just turret a lot then I think Void Weaver is really good. But if you're just playing standard stuff, I think Oracle right now is slightly better. And then, yeah, PvP talents are pretty much no-brainers. Ultimate Radiance, Phase Shift is insane. I think multiple times the game, I'm getting value out of this, avoiding CC. I can push into more aggressive situations because I know I've got Phase Shift. I can go for Fears more because I know I've got Phase Shift. If I didn't have this, you're just pretty much solely reliable, relying on, on death to stop stuff. And the difference with death and fade is fade is off global cooldown, right? So you can always phase shift something if it's up. So yeah, I rate this big time. Maybe there's an argument for double the spell instead against certain things. But now with, even with the premonition of insight, you can actually reduce the cooldown of the dispel as well, right? So it's, it's almost even weaker now than it was before. Trinity, I'm convinced is bugged. Strength of soul, maybe into some sort of melee comps could be good. If you are just staying back, turreting, chilling, maybe you don't need this. And again, it's kind of more of a, a Void Weaver style where you're staying back, but you could definitely run it as Oracle as well. If you're against like two, two heavy Fizz damage classes and you know you won't have too much to actually try and phase shift, then you could probably get away with this instead. I think that's probably the main switch, either this one or this one. Everything else is kind of, kind of minor. Arguably, you could switch catharsis on again instead of phase shift but i actually admit against affliction locks this is but i actually don't really like it i think that you're much better off trying to phase shift to some sort of a fear but yeah if you can line really defensively and you don't need to then it could be good to 
So again, it's very situational, very much on personal play style. I like phase shift. I think you can make a lot of nice plays with it. And I think you can be more aggressive with it, which is really nice. You can get value out of that a lot of the time if you land a fear. But again, personal preference. And then I think inner light and shadow is almost a must have. Just 10% more atonement healing and damage is super, super high value uh, and reliable as well. So you, you're, you're always going to get value out of this, basically, unless you forget to put it up. But yeah. So that's my PvP talents, and that is the Oracle build.